Hi, I'm Trace Hapdorn again. This afternoon, I am delighted to have with me Russell Seiler Jones, uh, who is the designer, writer, and uh, really kind of the founding director of the spiritually integrated psychotherapy curriculum that has become a part of sort of the next phase of development for psychotherapists within ACPE. Um, Russell, welcome. Glad you're here. Thank you. Nice to be here, Trace. Yeah, in terms of your work, you've had to think through the implementation of this whole piece. How do you think this process can inform the exploration of a merger with APC? And what are some of the hopes you'd have if this process is successful? Well, I, I, I don't know that I'm really qualified to speak to, to great implications about, about the merger, but, uh, but, but maybe some of what I, I'll, I'll say in a couple minutes will have some relevance. Uh, we've, the, the, the spiritually integrated psychotherapy program, maybe I should just say a minute about what that is. Yep. That'd be great. Uh, it's yep. a specialty training for people who provide mental health care. Uh, people who are in the mental health field are licensed to do that by states across the country to be licensed. They've done two or three years of graduate school and two or three years of intense supervision and practice before they're awarded a license. But all therapists get their license as generalists and then develop particular interests, things they want to uh, go deeper in. And there's a deep hunger in the psychotherapy world uh, among therapists uh, who want to go deeper in the realm of spirituality. So the, the, the SIP program is uh, ACPE's attempt to support therapists who want to get better to, to, to be more competent, to have more confidence um, in working with spirituality with their clients. And um, we're, we teach therapists how to uh, pay attention to the spirituality of their client, the spiritual worldview of their client without imposing a, a spiritual worldview upon them. We also teach them to pay attention therapists to their own spiritual resources, uh, values and practices. And to, and to be aware of how those inform the work they're doing too. So that's, <laughs> that's the gist of what the SIP program is. It's a way of serving the larger psychotherapy world. And uh, I think what we've learned um, that might be relevant to, to merger is uh, one, one of the principles that we've applied throughout is everything is temporary. Mm. We, everything we do, we, we see ourselves fashioning it in clay, not in stone, because because we know that every six months, every year, we're learning something we didn't know. We're learning by doing. So we're, in a way, I guess you'd say we're using the, the core CPE educational model of practice, reflection, practice. So we've we've been fortunate enough to have people come aboard as trainers who see themselves as trailblazers and pioneers. We're doing this new thing. Uh, we're expanding the mission of the organization, but we're gonna be, we're learning continually about how to connect with the people we're wanting to serve and what is the organizational infrastructure required to do that effectively and well. And we've also been gifted with ACPE staff who've just been amazing to keep working and tweaking to build the infrastructure to support the program. So I, if, that, if any of that's relevant, uh, I, I, if there's, I think if there's anything relevant there, I would say it's everything is temporary and we need to be patient and just trust each other to keep learning and growing and tweaking as we move along. Oh, I, I think there are a couple of things that jump out to me right away. One is just the nimble design, the kind of flexibility when you started working on it, you had no idea you'd be facing a global pandemic in terms of health, as well as the kind right. of racial equity reckoning that we've been facing as well. Um, both of those have to influence the design of this going forward because of the deep spiritual implications of both that are there. That's correct. Yeah. And, and we built this program to be offered in person. The, this program is built to seed and nourish communities of practice. The, 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 the basic training um, uh, is set up so that as people complete this 30 hours of continuing education curriculum, there's a community to catch them on the other side. So yeah. for people who, who taste this and uh, uh, really 
like what they taste. We've, you know, through ACPE, we've got a, we've got a community to keep supporting them over time to steep in this work, to learn this work. But we haven't offered an in-person training yet. Every training we've offered has been online because right as we came out the gate, uh, the, the pandemic hit. And so we've, we've, we've adapted and, and the online training is, is going great. Interestingly, we, we've also begun researching this program. We're, 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 we're doing a very small research, pre-test, post-test kind of research design um, that is, 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 is being presented to an IRB and, uh, uh, for approval you know, uh, in the next week or two. Um, but uh, we're, one of the things we're gonna be studying, one of the things we've built into the design is what are the outcomes for the online? And then once we get to be able to offer some in-person training, is there any difference? So we're, mm -hmm. we're actually gonna be able to study uh, and, and, and get data on what's the impact of, of an online versus an in-person training. So that's pretty cool. Well, that's really helpful too in thinking of as we approach this merger, what are the kinds of things that we wanna take account of at the beginning in terms of the outcomes that we'd like to see? And then how can we assess whether or not we get there? I mean, how do we be very intentional, not just in a research base, but also in that kind of organizational development space? Um, that's a, I think that's a, an important piece that we would regret if we didn't tend to um, from the very beginning. Yeah, I'm so grateful. We're 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 looking at this right out the gate, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm glad we've uh, been been encouraged and supported in doing that. You know, the, actually, the, I, I was able to meet with the ACPE Research Committee. Um, I don't know a month ago, and they were just terrific in offering encouragement and also some very helpful questions. Oh, good, good. Yeah, you know, the other thing that stood out to me just the notion of inviting psychotherapists to pay attention to the spiritual dimension. We've been pushing the World Health Organization at least as long as I've been here, and I know for years before that, to try to add spiritual health as the fourth leg of, of human health. Um, uh -huh. That They focus on physical, emotional, and social health, and they've yes. sort of tossed religion somewhere in between emotional and social. And what we've said is actually spiritual health is a broader category yes. that can really address a lot of the, the cultural and um, human dis-ease that we encounter around the world. So that we'd hope that they would eventually add that. They've done it in palliative care. We think it's more than just palliative care. Yeah, yeah. Well, keep pushing. That, that, that sounds right to me. On the and, same page. <laughs> the psychotherapy world has, has, has completely, I say completely, has there, there's a strong embrace of spirituality in the psychotherapy world. It's actually hard to think of a model of psychotherapy being taught right now that doesn't include some version of mindfulness. Mm. And, 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 you know, mindfulness is a, is a, is a core spiritual practice. Sure. Sure. And, uh, and, and it's just, it's very interesting to watch the way the therapy world in the last 30 years has reached for this, spiritual practice in the development of some of the cutting edge psychotherapy technologies. So it's, yeah, it, 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 it's here to stay, I think, in the psychotherapy world. I mean, it's always been here, actually. There was just this, a little season where there was some animosity or tension. A little and, Freudian and Marxist, the first, you know. Earth building years for the psychotherapy field. They, 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 they were trying to say, we're scientists, we're above all that. We're, we we, 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 we have this place at the scientific evidence-based table and poo-poo on all that spiritual stuff, but it's, it's always been there sort of uh, beneath the surface and it's really being embraced again now. Oh, that's so, great. I think I'm wandering a field from your question though. So. <laughs> well, actually you're teeing up the next question I want to ask, which okay. is really, as you think about this then, what are the kinds of ways you see the psychotherapists and counselors as resources for both the members of APC and ACPE thinking of our ongoing efforts towards integration? So I want to expand that question and say, how are psychotherapists, counselors, and uh, educators and chaplains of <laughs> mutual resource? Great. And, and I, I, I'm speaking from a like a microcosm of experience on this. 
Uh, one of my jobs is that I direct a, a psychotherapy and spirituality training program for therapists for the Wake Forest Baptist Health Center system. Uh, the subsidiary is called CareNet in North Carolina. And our psychotherapy residency is um, in a, an organizational relationship with the CPE program mm -hmm. at the hospital and the chaplaincy program at the, in the hospital system. And we work together. So there are educators who are on faculty in our residency training program and I teach in the, uh, in the CPE program. So I've already, for 12 or 13 years, I've been tasting this collaboration experience, you know, across, across these disciplines, getting a sense for ways we learn from one another naturally, if we have proximity to one another. And I'm fortunate enough that I, you know, it's in my job, it's in my job description to have proximity yeah, but I think organizationally, what's getting ready to happen is um, this this or, this the ACPE container is going to create opportunities and occasions for proximity among therapists, um, educators, and chaplains. You know, which is just so enriching. I mean, just just one little teeny, for instance. Um, therapists. This, where, where, I, where I see the chaplains helping the therapists. Uh, therapists have the luxury of often of, of an extended time with people. And so we can kind of adjust to the slower pace of, a, of the work uh, in ways that chaplains and educators of chaplains do, don't, do not. And, and it's very interesting to me to hear chaplains tell stories about these quick hitting sacred transformational moments with people. And I, I, as I listen to my friends who are chaplains and educators tell those stories, I think it helps me as a therapist to be aware of the possibility of right now and not to think, oh, I've got six weeks or six months with this person. What about these six minutes? You know, how, how do I, what am I looking for and listening for in these six minutes? that might be a transformational opportunity. So I, anyway, just the, the opportunity to tell stories, to compare notes, you know, how does spirit show up in a human life and how do we, how do we pay attention to it and collaborate with it? You know, I, I think we have a lot to learn from one another. Yeah, I think it, it, the, the notion of being a part of a guild, that we're all a part of this larger professional world of spiritual care and how do we resource each other in that rather than seeing each other as not related? Um, you do your thing, we do our thing. I mean, there's discretion within the practices and there's coherence within the larger field. That's correct. Yeah, I mean, we, there, 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 there are definitely differences in what a therapist does, a chaplain does, an educator does. Uh, but I think all of us are have some confidence, at, at least ACPE psychotherapists, the people who come to us for training and for a professional home. Um, we share this common value that the spiritual dimension of people's lives is powerful, that it is, that it is an immense resource that can be leveraged for stabilization and for healing. And it's also a place where people can get deeply injured and need someone with familiarity with the ways of spiritual injury to, to accompany uh, people on a healing journey uh, around that too. So just, just attention to the spiritual dimension. Um, yeah, we are, we are, we are family uh, in that, you know, in that work. That's beautiful. Anything else you want to add to finish up our time together today? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm always one for saying thanks. So thank, thank you for the conversation and thank ACPE. Thank, I, 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 I don't know who's going to be listening to this exactly, but any of you longtime ACPE people, thank you for welcoming us psychotherapists to the, to the circle. And, uh, I, I, grateful for the work you do and um, hope that what we're doing as psychotherapists in the world 
but also within this organization can be of support and, and value to you. Well, thank you for that. I think the story you told of your own work at Wake Forest is, is the kind of grassroots level integration that we're really hoping for folks across the organization. Appreciate your time. Thank you for, <laughs> especially after a long day, joining me. Um, yes. And um, I look forward to seeing the next incarnation of what SIP happens and what's Okay. Happens. Yeah, well, me too. Me too. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.